Hello everyone and welcome back to Pat the Movies. I'm Pat and today we are tackling a project that I have been wanting to try for a very long time and that is to 3D print a wristwatch. Now I know that wooden watches are all the rage with the youth these days, so that's what I'm going to attempt. I've got some wood fill PLA, and I went on Thingiverse and found this here file, so we're going to try to build this thing, so I'll print that out. And I also have some various parts. The in internals of the watch are just a standard quartz movement, so you can look in the description of the file if you want to try it for yourself. But if not, you can watch along and see if it's even worth trying in the first place, because I guess that's what I'm doing here. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing I'm doing here is printing out the shell of the watch. I'm using a brand called Ziltech, Z-Y-L-T-E-C-H, I think it is. And it prints pretty good, and of course I'm using a Prusa Mini, so Prusas make excellent printers and... It's, uh, I wouldn't be able to attempt this project with my old 3D printer, which was a, a Mono Price MP Select Mini, something like that. But yeah, this, this printer works a treat and prints things nice and flat. Fortunately, I did have some issues with the filament kind of being a little stringy, but it wasn't enough to mess up anything, so I just went along with the print anyway. So there's two parts to this build. You can see it has a kind of a backing plate, which is meant to hold the quartz movement and a top part of a faceplate which is meant to kind of hold a I guess a standard sized piece of 40 millimeter glass. I suppose you could also make this watch without using glass or crystal but your uh, your hands would be susceptible to you know stuff getting in the way so do that if you want but be warned it could be a little tricky. And here the print is kind of finishing up. It's got some spokes that are going to act as the hour markers and like the kind of this domed lip that's going to go over the face of the watch on top, on the top part of the case. It got a little stringy. I don't know if I should have used supports or anything like that. Uh, ultimately, I was able to clean it up and it wasn't uh, a deal breaker for the build. And now we're getting to printing out the face of the watch. This part is like... A really decent 3D printer is a necessity because it just prints a single layer and it's pretty tricky. <laughs> Took me a couple tries to actually get it right and get all the, the filament sticking the way I wanted it to. But in the end, it worked out. You know, we got a, a faceplate out of it. This is something that I had tried with my previous 3D printer and it, it, it turned out um, a bit abstract, shall we say, but with this, the new printer, it was a lot easier and definitely printed out a lot more um, visually aesthetically pleasing, you know, intentionally aesthetically pleasing. And that was really why I went with this design. It's just because I thought it looked the best of all the different designs that I could find on the internet of a 3D printed watch. And here we are, all the various bits and bobs, my two printed components that will make up the watch. And you can see just how thin that faceplate is. Very fragile. I used a stone fill PLA for that, by the way. Got a wood and stone contrast. All right, time to clean this up. And after hacking away at it with my good old fashioned pliers and some good old fashioned sandpaper and a good old fashioned box cutter, you know, like a professional, we got this thing looking pretty sweet. And one thing I will say is it printed out a lot larger than I was kind of expecting. I didn't want to mess with any of the dimensions to make it different because I didn't want to mess it up, you know. But here it is compared with my Seiko Alpinist. And you can see a 38 millimeter Alpinist, which is like kind of on the larger side of what I'm comfortable wearing. This thing is definitely above 40 millimeters. Take it or leave it. It's 3D printed. What do you want? It's for the novelty. My next course of action was to harvest a movement from one of my various watches I have scattered around my abode. They're, they're pretty much all the same, you know, shape. So if you have just any kind of quartz movement lying around, it'll probably fit in here and you can probably reuse the hands. Alternatively, you can go online and find some that will suit your needs. But yeah, any generic quartz movement that is this general shape and size is probably exactly what you are going to need. Ultimately, what I wound up doing is I actually had this watch 
here that I, I wanted to use it for a different video, but it, it didn't work out. And it turned out to have all of the parts that I needed to complete this particular build. So here I am cracking off the back and you see movement in there, exactly what I needed. Even has a crown on there, which the other movement I was working with did not have. So I just gingerly removed that, did a little test fit and, you know, dropped it a couple times just to make sure it was okay. And sure enough, it fit at least the shell of the case just fine. Now, after removing that, the this watch has kind of a weird handset. They're just kind of like these discs with a line and a, a dot on them. So I like that. That's why I got the watch, because I wanted to kind of modify that, because they're, you know, an abstract handset. I just decided that I wanted to use it for this build. So you can see that dot is actually the minute hand, and it kind of is just on this clear disc that rotates. I thought that was pretty cool. Definitely a little unorthodox. And also... Turns out I was able to reuse the crystal that this watch came with. It turned out to be the perfect size. Now, next step is I wanted to paint up the wood here a little bit. I just used acrylic paints to get a rustic rose-colored wood finish, and I just mixed them up, used my art degree for all it was worth, and got me some colors that I liked, and then watered them down so they weren't like totally opaque, and stained the wood fill. And to be totally honest, I think I overdid it a little bit with the color. Wish I had gone a little bit lighter or uh, a little less red, maybe a little less dark. In the end, I think it worked out okay. You can see here, I'm just trying to get a, you know, tastefully distressed look. It's wood, you know, it's natural. It's supposed to look like it came from a tree that's been out in nature. So I tried to achieve that effect. And as a final step, I wanted to give it a couple of coats of some two times Ultra Cover Clear Gloss from Rust-Oleum, one of my favorite products. You know, it gives things a cool, glossy, durable coat. I like it. And this is just to kind of protect the paint that I put on there and also to give it kind of a, a polished shine. I didn't want to totally remove the 3D printed like lines. I know some people prefer to do that. I prefer to leave them because I like to see that things have been 3D printed when I 3D print them. I think the it's a cool like way to, I don't know, show off that you can 3D print stuff. All right, here we are at the final assembly. I'm just kind of testing everything, making sure it fits. Probably should have tested it a little better. I wound up having some fitment issues. I don't know what was up with that. I don't know if it was the model itself or because I was just kind of hodgepodging parts together or because I printed it wrong. I'll just assume that it was my fault somehow. So here I am doing some improvisational modification to try to get the whole thing to fit together. And after hacking away and gingerly placing my faceplate on there, followed by my cool and unconventional handset, which I am delighted to say did work, like the whole, th the watch is functional in some kind of way. It was time to put the whole shebang together. I had some screws laying around that I tried to use for it and that kind of worked. And after a, uh, you know, bit of tweaking, we got something that was passable as a good old fashioned, or I guess a good new fashion, 3D printed watch. And here it is at long last our 3D printed watch with bands near it. Yeah, this did not completely turn out the way that I wanted it to. The fit was just ever so slightly not exactly where it needed to be. The screws didn't really hold in place. The stem didn't really fit inside and the back cover didn't really fit down into the inside cover, just a lot of little tiny itty bitty things that might not have been that big of a deal kind of built up to be one big kind of a failure, which I hate to say, but I really just got right to the finish line thinking everything was going to go exactly as I wanted it to. And then <laughs> no dice. So that's what happened. I thought it was good enough to show it to you anyway, because at least at a glance, it is aesthetically presentable and can give you an idea of what a watch that you 3D print on your own can do and can look like. And, you know, I, I, I'm okay with that. And at the very least, I think that this thing was a fun project, a fun way to spend a day. Do I think, is it 
a viable option to make and to wear every day? Nah, I don't think so. I think it's definitely more of a novelty than anything else, which is ultimately why I'm okay kind of calling it a day, having face planted at the finish line. But when it's all said and done, I had a fun time making it. Hope you like watching me give it the old college try. And I guess that's going to be it. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if not, I hope you at least learned something. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit like and hit the bell and subscribe. Do all that stuff. It helps get this video out to people that might enjoy it. And if not, you know, leave a dislike, leave a comment, let me know. I'm always looking to improve. Take it easy, everyone, and I will see you next time.